Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. May the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if only you would put up with a little foolishness from me, please put up with me. For I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God, since I betrothed you as to one husband to present you as a chaste of virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thought may be corrupted from a sincere and pure commitment to Christ. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preach, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you receive, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it well enough. For I think I am not in any way inferior to these super apostles, even if I am untrained in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. In every way, we have, missed this, we have made this plain to you in all things. Did I make the mistake when I humbled myself so that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you without charge? I plundered other churches by accepting from them in order to minister to you. And when I was with you and in need, I did not burden anyone, for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs. So I refrain and will refrain from burdening you in any way. By the truth of Christ in me, this boast of mine shall not be silenced, in the region of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. The word of the Lord. You, Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. 
I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The works of the Lord are justice and truth. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. The works of the Lord are justice and truth. The work of his hands are faithful and just. Sure are all his precepts. Reliable forever and ever, root in truth and equity. The works of the Lord are justice and truth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the last few days, we've had the privilege of listening to 2 Corinthians from St. Paul. And it's one of those letters that is very complicated. There's a lot going on in this particular letter. And even if we just listen to today's first reading, we recognize how many different points that St. Paul touches on as he writes to the Corinthians. But one thing is clear. He is not able to visit them at this time. And scholars seem to agree that there have been problems in the community. And he touches on one that is very poignant when he says, I'm not a super apostle. I'm not like these uh, super apostles that have been passing through. Because in the time that St. Paul lived, there were others that were preaching the gospel. And they were doing so, telling the people to follow things in different ways. Or maybe not having the Spirit in the same way that St. Paul did. Or maybe leading the people astray and upsetting them. And so what St. Paul is trying to tell the Corinthians today is though I cannot be with you, though I um, founded you, he always makes that a point. He doesn't want them to forget that. But what he wants them to know is not to be led astray. And in some ways, this is an important message for us in our spiritual life as well. Because as you know, there are many different voices that we hear today that can affect us and how we think and how we relate to our Lord. And sometimes it seems as though the ones that are most painful, the ones that are uh, the most absurd sometimes, might seem to us to be, uh, maybe that's the one I should follow. We We might answer ourselves that way. But what our Lord is teaching us today through St. Paul, is something that's very poignant that St. Paul ends today's letters with. Do you know that I love you? That whole reminder, he goes, of course I do. Yes, I love you. He reminds them of that. And today's gospel is very similar in regard to St. Paul's letter today. 
Because in today's gospel reading, Jesus is reminding his disciples, his apostles, how much it is important for us to forgive others. How important it is for us to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Those that we would maybe want to hold a grudge against. And if we listen to today's gospel in light of St. Paul, what we recognize is that what our Lord desires to teach us is, of course, he loves us. Of course, he desires what is best for us. Of course, he desires that we experience fully his love and his forgiveness. And if we don't allow ourselves to respond in that same way to others, if we don't allow ourselves to respond with that same kind and tender love that our Lord gives to us, then we ourselves are the ones that are going to pay the price. We ourselves are the ones who are faulted. If we were to ask ourselves, does Jesus love us? Hopefully we would say, of course he does. Of course Jesus loves us. And that's the message that he wants us to hear today. Of course I love you. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, first of all, for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for those who are least in our world, especially those who are in any way suffering from hunger or because of treatable diseases. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for those who are sick, for those who are in need of God's healing, especially those who suffer from uh, depression, from mental issues, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us remember the supporters of the Society of the Little Flower, and for their many special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us remember those suffering because of the weather in different parts of the world, for them we pray to the Lord. Let us remember our troops and also first responders that they may have a safe day today. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and let us now bring our special intentions, our deepest longings before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, though we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, this is the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I leave Mount Carmel. Go in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Oh, one reminder, as you're out leaving today, please uh, be as generous as possible. Thank you.